I'm going to start this recording. Webinar is now streaming live on Facebook. That's the good news. I really, I feel like starting us off with a little Palo Santo in part because Evan and I were talking right before the show and he was sharing how he at some points had facilitated some ayahuasca and medicine ceremony. And I think I talked about this last Saturday. I just love the, well, I like, I love a lot about ceremony and I find a lot of value in it. And sometimes the value is the ceremony. So we're just going to use this smudge feather to get some of this Palo Santo. We're just going to smudge away the bad vibes. Actually, I think someone told me that Palo Santo smudges, maybe Evan will be able to tell us once we bring him on, but I think Palo Santo smudges, every, Palo Santo is all the bad energy and then white sage, I think is all of the energy entirely. I believe that's how it goes. So anyhow, all the bad vibes, come on camera. The smoke is messing with the camera. All the bad vibes are now gone from this space. My, my office smells fantastic. The focus on this camera is a little wacky. I'm just gonna move myself. There we go. Bring me into focus. I'm gonna start with a steamy brew of tea. You can see the steam coming off of it, which is quite delightful. I'm gonna click this so I can see myself. I'm gonna mute that. All right. Oh, did I? I got to do the important check where I checked. Did it do? Oh, yeah, of course it did just me. So let's change that to public. There's no rhyme or reason. Is it just me or is it the whole public? Facebook doesn't care. It's just going to randomly roll a dice and determine where we're posting this live to. So welcome. Now you can see this. You would have seen this the same part if you're watching this in replay. I drink some of that delicious tea there. Um. Well, I'll start by showing you a little, a fun thing I have on my desk. I, so a while back, I, how do I find my way into this? One of the things that I really appreciate is craftsmanship. And as a man who's really committed to his craft, I, I believe in the, a poor, a lousy plumber blames his tools. We're all familiar with that adage. But I, I think um, people that are really craftsmen have tools that are high quality because that's our work. And so I, I very much enjoy um, having really nice tools. And so like a while back, I got this, I'm a writer. I write a lot. And so I bought this beautiful, Bay was the one that found these. I think Bay actually gave me this as a gift. So it's a brass fountain pen, which is very delightful to write with. It's got a nice heft to it, which is always pleasing to me. And I was like, man, I like brass. Brass feels nice to have on my desk. So slowly I've had these, I've accumulated things. I've got this brass little knife edge. This is the brass Amazon uh, package opener. I got this from a Kickstarter. And the most recent one, which is totally silly, but it's on my desk and I'm gonna show it to you is, they call it the Enigma coffer. So it looks like this, it's just this little square. And then it opens, ooh, look at that. There's a coffer. You could put potato chips or maybe four Smarties or something inside. Or almost certainly what I think a lot of people would do is put, I think you'd stash your drugs in here. I'm pretty sure that's where your ease or your bag of weed or something goes. And yeah, there's no, there's none of that in here, as you can tell. And uh, the neat thing is there's a little ball bearing right in there that you can't quite see. And then on this side, there's a little hole. And so what you do is you close this, it's got magnets, so it, it snaps shut, but you can still pull it open. And you turn it upside down and you bang it against something. And then once you've done that, you can't open it. And so that's people get, they, they're like, what the heck? This is such an enigma. The Sphinx is riddle. Oh, but I managed to open it. So anyhow, it didn't work the way I thought it was going to work in that moment. Let me see if I can do it though. Because this, this will be fun for us to just watch me struggle with technology. Did I get it? No. You have to give it a good whack. No, try two more times. Okay, well, I guess this is the enigma. How do you shut the enigma coffer? What's meant to happen is the ball, if you hit it hard enough, gets dislodged from the magnet up here, falls down there, and then that creates a, a block. And to open it, then you have to turn around, hit it, and then you can slide it open. Anyhow, that's the latest piece of brass on my desk. The other thing that I found recently in a um, antique shop is this, which is a brass, a uh, cigar cutter. So this cuts a wedge. You would take your cigar 
we have one here that's already cut and then you'd put it in this end and then you would snap it shut and it cuts out a little nick in the cigar so that you're uh you're able to smoke you can get that nice smoke going uh, through here's the truth about me and cigars i like the act and the concept of smoking them more than i enjoy really the uh experience i guess so it's really neat for me sometimes very rarely uh which is a good thing I'll be like, I think I'm going to smoke a cigar and then I'll go and smoke a cigar and I'll maybe sit overlooking our harbor here in Victoria and sometimes I'll brainstorm ideas for a podcast or um, do some writing while I smoke. And the thing about a cigar is they often taste quite bad. And I noticed that the better quality of tobacco, the more to me, it smells like horse, your horse feces. And um, so that's an interesting thing. But there's just something about like this notion, there's a romance to me about the act of smoking a cigar. And so I like that part of it. That's almost like the very best kind of vice where I don't, you know, like booze, I find tastes quite delicious. So that's like an added layer. I like the romance of booze and then I love and the romance of creating cocktails and stuff. And then I like it tastes good too on top of it. So it's a double whammy. Whereas a cigar, there's nothing that's going to make me a cigar addict. I just don't enjoy it enough to do that. We got six viewers. Who are you? Put your name in the comments. Let's let's get you present. Show us who you are. Shout your name. Say hello. Happy Friday. Get in here with us. Get into the arena. Grab myself off. It's a little warm in here. So the distinction I'm going to start by talking about today, and then we'll bring Evan on, is um, a common one I hear when people start to... Um, I don't know how I'd really put it. I guess it's when people start to want to have their leadership developed or maybe put their hand up to step into um, getting developed as a leader. Hey, Andrea, nice to see you. Thanks for going first. So first, typically what happens is everyone wants to embody leader as a concept because that sounds sexy, right? It's like, oh, cool. Who wouldn't want to be a leader as opposed to a victim or just a normie? Gross. So we all love that concept. It sounds great. It's like the concept of I want to be better in my life or I want to live into my edge. Conceptually, of course, you'd want to live on your edge. That's where all the juice is. And I've seen that. You know, I saw that image on the Internet that showed my comfort zone and then everything I want is outside of it. So conceptually, I want to live outside of my comfort zone. But in practice, that's where it all falls down. In practice is where we have to actually be with the consequences of the choice to do so. And that's where it becomes um, less sexy. And so that's that's the thing I'm going to talk about here. <laughs> hey, Satch Code, nice to have you with us. I totally have five seconds. So those five seconds must have been sweet. Hey, like you get the cigar, you have like maybe a nice, like a cigar lighter like this, or, or maybe one of these guys. Like, oh, this is going to be cool. We're going to we're going to get into this. And, and then I imagine you put it up to your mouth, took a suck, and then was like, mm, I don't like this. Is that, is that how it went for you? Also, look at this funny lighter. This is a USB lighter. And so it's a arc lighter. It basically creates a spark between there. And then it's rechargeable. It doesn't use any fuel. It just uses electricity. So you can light candles with that. I find that very handy. So anyhow, um, anytime... Typically that I offer some kind of leadership development, people are like, hell yeah, because at this point it exists solely as a concept in their minds. And they're like, yeah, I want to become a leader. <clears throat> this would happen most frequently when I would, or when I do lead leadership teams for intensives, because that's where you have a lot of people and the leadership team carries some cachet. There's some prestige baked into it. So people are kind of like, they're saying yes, not because they're present to what they want to create in their lives. I should say they're less present to what they want to create in their lives from the being of leader. And they're more present to FOMO and like, I want to be the cool kid. Right? We all have that desire to be the cool kid to some extent. And so what happens is people say yes, and then we start to do the work. And one of the first things that we come up against is when I start to reflect someone's leadership to them, they say, well, that's just not my style of leadership. 
So that's like the common, oh yeah, thanks for sharing that, Adam. Thanks for reflecting or Bay, Bay reflects leadership the same way I do. And, and they'll say, um, you know, thank you. That's just not my style of leadership. And I'm really here to practice my style of leadership. So we have to look at that because that's such a big barrier in the way of you developing yourself as a leader. And it's, it's a sneaky and subtle one to that. Um, well, Heather, get over on my site, make your comments here. Jeez. Yeah. With the rest du gong. It's, I think it's because I made it private and then everyone was able to share it. So it might've gone that way. Uh, Facebook. Um, so the idea that you have a style of leadership, I'm going to start by saying that's a canard. That's a trap. And the reason that's a trap is because um, the development of leadership is agnostic to any particular style. There's no style to the way to lead. What leadership is, is a, is a way of showing up that allows for you to be and do whatever is required in the moment. So the notion that there's a style of leadership suggests that there's a way to be and do. There's like, oh, my style of leadership is that I do these things and I be this way and that creates leadership, which is inherently limiting, I assert. Because if you have a style of leadership, there's a set of things that you are willing to be and do. And then there's another set of things that are outside of your style. Otherwise, why would you even make this distinction? It would it'd be just like saying the air is filled with molecules. So my style of leadership really is someone saying, well, there's a set of things I be and do as leader. And that's what I'm committed to being and doing. When we're developing someone's leadership, what we're really doing is noticing the places where they are stuck, the automaticities and how they show up and how those block them and where they're unable to be and or do a certain way. So we're not trying to get people from one style to another style. We're trying to support them in dropping the notion of style altogether. We're trying to help them see the sacred cow that is the idea of their style of leadership so that then they can start to embrace whatever is called for in the moment. If what is called for in the moment is that you spit on the floor, that's what's called for in the moment. Now, I can't think of a lot of moments when that would be the most effective style of leadership or the most effective thing to do, but I can tell you that the most effective leader is someone who has access to that possibility should that be what's called for. It's not that there's never a time where that might be of benefit. It's not that there's never an instance where that might be what's called for. And as soon as you have created a rule titled my style of leadership, under that rule, it is impossible to do something like that, never acceptable. You have now cut off a portion of how you could show up as a leader and relegated it to impossibility. So it's limiting your range. So the trouble with my style of leadership that, that, that statement, that attitude, that kind of holding as precious your style of leadership is that it gives you an escape hatch. A, a friend of mine, um, I, was, I was in a conversation with, with him about this and he was saying like, well, you know, I'd love for you to bring sort of the leadership development you've got, but you know, there's this piece too that I would want you to honor. And with as much love as I could really offer, I, I, I was like, you know, I really get it. But the trouble is that's not, as soon as you have this, like, here's my style of leadership that I need you to honor, Adam, you've given yourself an escape hatch. Because the whole premise of developing your leadership is that there are areas that you are not yet able to step into. There's places where you stop, where you don't allow yourself to expand further. And as soon as we have this safeguard, this like, well, that's just not my style of leadership. It, it gives us a place to reserve the right to not empower the reflection that we're getting, to not empower the training and development. As soon as someone's like, well, look, I noticed the way you're showing up is really soft and meek. Well, that's just my style. What I do, Adam, is that I, I, I don't take up space. I stand back from the space so other people can take up the space. Got it. But what's happening right now is that because you're modeling not taking up space, everyone else in this room is not taking up space space and the energy is really low and it's quiet and it's quite boring. Do you notice that? Yeah, but that's okay. 
so this is an example where what's happening in the conversation is that people are reserving the right. The way I'm doing things is the right way. And what that really is, is just defending against the possibility of creating something new beyond what they already know. Andrea, you've nailed it. That's just not how I am is another version of that's just not my style of leadership. Those that are really committed to having their leadership developed have to let go of their story about their style of leadership. Because what that's really saying is there is a place beyond which I'm unwilling to go. And all that really does is limit your capacity as a leader. And it has you stay here. Another um, version of this, someone I worked with for a while, used to say he would never, um, I never require people to do anything. So if people said, I'm going to do this thing and they didn't, Either they brought it forward and were like, hey, I didn't do that thing and I really want to, in which case it'd be a conversation. But other than that, it, there was nothing that happened. There was no conversation, no development. It was just like, oh, well, that happened. And he would kind of go to this. Well, that's just not what I do. That's just not my style of leadership, which is great until what's really going to create the breakthrough result is that people get confronted with the impact of the way they're showing up. And some of the impacts of someone who says they're going to do something and then it just sort of gets swept under the rug. We just forget about it. I assert would be like people stop taking you as powerful about your word. You tell them you're going to do something and they make other plans. They're kind of like, yeah, you said you're going to do that. But the last three times you just didn't. And then unless I asked about it, it never showed up. So why would I believe you this time? So then in terms of your leadership, you have this impact that you're not responsible for. People are waiting for you to actually take some ownership and you just don't have the capacity to do it. And so this person I was working with supporting who had that as their story about their style of leadership forever left people in that kind of ditch. They just never were able to get beyond it because he was never willing or able to stand for them to create something different. Which belief, Heather? Tell me which belief you're referring to so that I can sort of address where we go with that. Oh, I just spilled tea on my shirt. Hmm. That's silly. Why would I do that? It's good tea wasted. Yeah, Heather, tell me what particular belief the client would be stuck in. I'll speak to that. And then we're going to bring Evan on after that, because I want to address that. It sounds like a good one. I'm going to light a little more Palo Santo while I do that. Just get it really stinky in this office. It's quite warm, too. It may, might be too warm for a double layer day, really. My fan keeps putting out my flame here. Right, quick, Heather. <laughs> it's always, it's always some dead air. I think when we move this to the podcast, my producer removes this often because uh, it can be quite boring sitting waiting for someone to create an elaboration of the question that they've asked. But it's so valuable. The questions that you guys ask while we're live are just they provide such value. And um, the <clears throat> the nature of all this stuff is that it starts to um, becomes the water we swim in. So I'm not always aware or even conscious of these places that might become sticking points or even where there's jargon or something present in my speaking. And so when you guys ask these questions, it's so valuable. I so appreciate it. Okay. Looks like Heather might, might be a little bit before she writes a, a follow-up to that. So I'm going to, Oh, there we go. Oh, you're all fine, Heather. So when they're stuck in that, this is just their leadership style. How might we move them or do I not? I didn't hear all you said. You may have answered it. So Heather's asking like when someone's stuck on this idea that, well, this is just my leadership style. What do we do? I basically bring the conversation I just brought, which is to, to invite them to consider a different possibility for leadership than the way they're holding it. And this is kind of the challenge of anyone who's coaching or developing leadership, which I'm going to assert are pretty much the same thing in a lot of, a lot of ways, which is that um, people say yes to working with you to have their leadership developed or to create a different life than the one they're already on because there's something that they want to create in their life outside of the world they already know. And then what happens is they fight you on what you're putting in front of them based on the world they already know. So, a very short example was I was talking to someone and I was present to like, there's just a total lack of joy 
in his being. Who he was was joy. I was like, man, this person is a lot of joy. I get it. But the way they were showing up in the moment was very Eeyore in their energy. And so I reflected this to them. I'm like, hey, you know, I notice it just seems like there's not really any joy at all. You seem kind of burdened and mired and heavy. And what, so that's the reflection, right? That's my work. It's like, hey, here's what you can't see. And then you can probably imagine what he did with that, which was argue about why that wasn't the case. Oh, well, I think you're seeing that. He, he was kind of asking, the, the question he was asking was like, why, do, why does Adam say that when I know it's not true? So he's beginning from the point of view that like, well, that's wrong, but why would Adam say that? And so the way he came at it was like, oh, well, I think the reason you're saying that, Adam, is because my life typically is very joyful, but I'm just here with you. I'm bringing the stuff that's not joy filled. So that's why you're experiencing that. And it's like, that's like explaining to the mirror why what it's showing you is not true. Oh, I think the reason you think that tie looks that way with that shirt is because over there, it's a little different. But when I put this on, the lighting in the closet, no, <laughs> the mirror is saying this is how that looks. And so my job is often just to invite them to, first, I would reflect that, hey, I notice that you're arguing with me about what I'm inviting you into. Like you're saying you want access to something beyond where you're currently at and you are arguing for why not. So are you, do you want this? Make sure that I've got their consent on that. And then once they've said yes, if, if they do want this, great. Are you willing to drop what you think you know in service of learning something that you don't yet know? Are you open to me having something you may not already be able to see? If they're a yes to that, the last part would probably be like, okay, great. So you're going to have to let go of this idea that you know, or that you have a style of leadership or any of that, because where I'm standing is outside of that entire circle, that entire sphere you've created about your life. That's where I would go with them. And then, you know, throughout the conversation from there, we're just checking to see like, are they, are they still willing or have they shifted back to, well, here's why I don't agree with that. Okay, great. So we're back in that old space. So I want to check in with you again. Do you want this? Is there something past this that you're actually after? Very low viewership this morning. We just have two viewers, two live viewers. I wonder if Facebook's changed this back to a private, private live it. Anyhow, it doesn't really matter. I don't care. We're just bulldozing ahead. Let's talk about Evan. I'm going to um, share a little bit about how I know Evan, and then I'm going to bring him in and we're going to dive in together. So um, Evan and I originally met because... A friend and I were, were um, leading some men's work here in Victoria. So I'd been training with a friend of mine, John Wineland, who is very well known and highly regarded these days, probably one of the people that men would train with if, um, if they wanted to deepen their, um, their embodiment of the masculine energy and to learn how to support other men to do the same. And um, so my friend and I, my friend Wes and I had um, been doing that work and we're like, hey, we want to bring this to Victoria. We want to bring something like that because there's not a lot of that happening. And so we ran, we just rented a place. We invited a whole bunch of people and we started, um, I think we were charging very little. It was about $10. We were just like, we want people to make some kind of financial commitment to come. We want to pay for the cost of the building and the rest, whatever. We don't care. And so we did maybe I want to say about five of these. And the first one, we had a lot of men. And then slowly, it sort of wound down. So we had less and less people. Towards the end, we had maybe four or five men showing up. And this is often the way for anything, growing anything, I find is often this way is at first, there's a novelty. People are like, hell yeah. And, um, and then they're like, oh, God, I went and I stood in this pose for five minutes. And I held my hands up above my head for five minutes, staring into the eyes of the other man. It was awful. It felt really uncomfortable. It was hard work. I don't like that. I don't want to keep doing that. It's easier not to. Like most work, the sexiness is what comes on the other side of your practice, but showing up to the practice is really the work. And when people don't immediately get the sexiness, they start to lose interest. So a lot of people at first, we probably had about 25 men show up for the first one, then maybe 10. And then we were kind of hanging out with five. And I imagine if we'd really been committed to keep building this thing from there we would have grown because people would have stayed we'd have had some dedicated practitioners they would have stayed in the practice and then that would start to build on itself that's how these things tend to go in my experience so the last couple of um 
these workshops that we did, Evan was one of the people that showed up and I didn't, I don't know how he found us, didn't know anything about him, but he showed up and he was committed to practice. And um, there came a point where Wes and I sat down and we're like, Hey, we're not really, we're not feeling super inspired to keep doing this. Um, I was pretty clear that the, the topics of leadership and raising the, the floor of coaching and, um, and just working one-on-one -on -one with people is really where I was feeling pulled towards. And I don't know what that was there for Wes, but he also wasn't feeling inspired to continue doing this, especially with that, those numbers, right? It's not to say we couldn't have grown something. It's more just that we weren't inspired to do so. And so we started to wind it down and Evan said, Hey, you know what, what, where do I go from here? And what do I do? And I believe I told him like, Hey, you should check out John Wineland's work. That guy's doing awesome stuff. His work's amazing. And I think you get a lot out of it. So John, John Wineland is in uh, Santa Monica may have moved now, but he was there for at least when I was uh, hanging out with him and um, his work required a financial commitment. I can't remember what it is now somewhere in the 12, 15 K or something like that. It's a nine month program and you have to be committed to traveling three times out of that year to go to these um, in-person uh, events, we'll call them that you could call them a retreat, but they're, they're less of a retreat. You're going to do some work and it's going to be confronting. And, um, and I didn't hear from Evan for a while. And then I heard from him, you know, maybe four or five months later. And he just said, Hey, I want you to know I'm, I'm doing the work with John. It's amazing. It's super awesome. And I'm really loving it. And that really, uh, inspired me because so many people come through my doors and are like, Hey, I love this or that, or I'm really committed to this. What do I need to do? And I'm always willing to provide a path and often nothing happens from there. And that's just human nature, right? We're like, I really want this thing. And then we find out it's going to demand something from us. We're like tomorrow, I'll want it tomorrow for now, maybe more ice cream, or, you know, we just do whatever we do, what is comfortable and what we can keep doing. That's more consistent with the life we're already living rather than doing what's going to be a step into possibility and a confrontation of our fear. And so for Evan to actually have taken this on, I was like, holy crap, this guy's up to some stuff. And we've just kept in touch since. And um, about eight, uh, maybe about, yeah, about eight months ago, he reached out and said, hey, I see that the forge is open and I really want to, um, I want to, I think the words to use, I want to kind of get around you. I want to be in relationship with you. I love the stuff you're putting out. And so for the last six months or so, Evan and I jumped on the phone. He said yes to the forge and he's been working with Bay and I uh, ever since whilst continuing his work with John. So uh, I think you're going to love him. I'll get him to put his, bring your video on, Evan, bring your mic on. As I was talking about you, I noticed we got more viewers. So you are the more popular topic between you and Everyone's what I was talking about waiting. leadership. They're waiting for me to get on here. Totally. Yeah. They're like, get the special celebrity guest on, Adam. <laughs> That's what we're here for. <laughs> I had someone come on once uh, while I was with someone, I was coaching them at the time and they were like, they, they, jabbed at me they're like special celebrity guests huh we're all people with egos aren't we and i was like dude it's a joke <laughs> we're just having fun here <laughs> and and yes we all have egos but come on man let's just play um anything about your background or the our origin story you want to share that i didn't cover or that you'd like to speak to no other than yeah that was uh oh how i found you was actually meetup.com was where i found you guys i don't know which way right. you put put that out there but i was like so i literally read way the superior man and I, it was like get a men's group and i was typing into my computer like men's group victoria and then i found this <laughs> thing and found the, your little facebook group and yeah and, and literally the rest is history so here i am it's, today it's amazing because there's a few um origin stories i'll call them for lack of a better word like that where do, do you know uh, my friend callum ramsey do you know that name I don't no okay um callum's a really cool guy um he's i think he's the head coach for rugby canada which i believe trains out here they're talking about going to the olympics but another version of that where i just gave a talk at uh some event here called confabulation and he came up afterwards and was like hey i feel like we're meant to talk and and then something grew out of that and you just never know with this stuff, right? Yeah. We don't know our impact until like two years, three years later. And we're like, oh, holy shit. I'm so glad I did that. So that's cool. 
Um, anything you want to share about your work with John? You're in your third year now, right? In the third year, I'm assisting now in the program, which is really cool. I just talked to John about potentially another year, which is kind of we're in conversation with right now. Um, yeah. That's been great. I'm heading. I'm heading down to uh, assist at the women's uh, and the men's as well. So EMLT and EWRI, the two programs that he runs. So I'll be down What's the name? I'm I'm not familiar. He didn't have the acronym for the women's one. EWRI. So, yeah, so it's Embodied Women's Relationship Immersion. Huh, cool. Yeah. So like the leadership is the masculine, and then you know relationship and all that kind of this. It's, I think just a more catchy name for for the feminine. Totally. Um, yeah, which is super cool because I haven't assisted a women's uh, event yet, so I'm really interested. I'll be, I'll, I won't be in the room as much, obviously, but uh, it'll just be right. interesting to be in that space and that energy and and do a little bit of practice, which is something I I, I aspire to practice more with women because I've been really yeah. into the the men's containers. I just had the one with John with the coed, so yeah. It's a it's a neat experience, like totally different. Has been my mm -hmm. Bay and I work with. Uh, the Justin, two teachers right? we work with yeah justin and london and and yeah. so we're a lot of our practice these days is in two body practice with each other and yeah. i'm like oh this is different from a man because a man would fucking <laughs> do this right <laughs> he would be <laughs> in the structure and on purpose with me not which is, like moving around yeah that's right not <laughs> not not a mountain in front of me be a, the woman is a flowing river and and that's beautiful and, and i want 100%. i crave more of that but it's mm -hmm. just interesting to see that dynamic show up absolutely Cool. All right. Well, what what are we going to dive into here, Evan? What's our topic to explore together? Yeah. Well, yeah. I was thinking about this coming up um, and chat a little bit before our conversation. I have found, and I'll give a little bit of context. So I really went full time into the work that I'm offering with men and then coaching and stuff. As you know, um, basically last August is when I, I got invited to teach a workshop and that really put everything to momentum. And I, I have that. noticed, yeah, it was an incredible opportunity. Another one of those synchronistic kind of moments where I'm like, look at where I'm now, right? And it's really uh -huh. the momentum that's built and how it's evolved. It's been really uh, uh, inspiring, like for myself, just to watch it happen in front of me. Um, but I'm noticing as time goes on and as I take more on and I'm busier, I am, um, I'm very much stuck in a mode of perpetually feeling like I haven't done enough and mm. that there is more to do. And I'm like, as I lay in bed, I'm like thinking about all the stuff. And then when I wake up, I'm like filled, like rarely in the past would I go over and reach to my phone first thing in the morning. <clears throat> so I had, I had some good hygiene around that. And this is just an example, but like now it's like, I got to look at what's going on. I got to look at emails or how did that post do like all this kind of stuff. Right. Just, I've become obsessive. And there's an exhilarating part of it. And there is also like a quite part of it that's starting to feel unhealthy. Um, mm. And it kind of, there's a, a little bit more to that is not necessarily all the things that I'm focusing on are really generating abundance for me or like, you know, they're not really generative actions. And so I don't know what the request in there is exactly because it's very, um, I don't know what that would look like at the end of this call necessarily. Perhaps that'll come clear as we talk about it, but it's there's something there around. I really want to trust, I think, that, you know, prior to we got into live, I was saying like, oh, I was feeling this struggle and then like really acting from this urgency of like having to make things happen and then the mm. thing happening and then I rest for a little bit and then I go back into this like fighting it out and, you know, um, just a, it's just an exhausting uh, place to live from. It's uh -huh. very much on the pendulum of like, oh, I'm good. I got it. I'm good for a bit, but I'm good for a bit. And I, until I'm not good for a bit. And that's what really drives me into action again. And right. um, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of sustainability for that. Like I'm feeling the physical and energetic um, exhaustion from that, I think a little bit. And I would like to, I would like to make more intentional moves rather than like being busy and feeling like I'm doing a lot, but ultimately it's, um, it's kind of overwhelming and it's not really, you know, it's keeping me in that urgency trap. I don't know if that mm. makes a lot of sense to you or not. Makes a great deal of sense. So it sounds like there's, 
well, I'm very present to what is or your experience mm -hmm. of what is, which is like, there's this, I'm not doing enough, you know, kind of, you called it like urgency that you experience, like, oh, I got to get into some kind of action. And then it sounds like taking a bunch of action from that place, which then becomes tiresome and leaves you feeling pretty burnt out. You know, there's a lack of sustainability there, at which point you're kind of like, well, I don't know if you mentioned that part. So what happens from here? It sounds like you're currently in that urgency phase and you talked about a pendulum. So what happens mm -hmm. next? So, well, that's the interesting thing is like, I don't, I don't even know if I all of a sudden, like, I got to take more action and like do stuff because I, I am in a lot of action, you know, um, totally. But for something just happens to like fall in my lap like the conversation i had this morning and just out of the blue and someone's just like hey i would love to work with you and they're they're committed fully you know what i mean so things like that happen it's just like oh i would really love to just be able to trust that the work that i'm putting in is getting the results that i desire and i don't it's like there's a lack there's a fundamental lack of of self-trust and i think that mm. feeds into this <clears throat> into this kind of like scrambling to check things all the time and do things all the time because then i it's it's almost like i'm lying to myself that all those little actions are actually producing things which on some level they are but there's certain i would like to be able to let go a little bit more and be like okay i'm showing up i'm doing the things that i'm committed to doing and the results are are going to be there you know and um yeah i i, I don't feel that way Got it. <laughs> Got it. So that's where you want to be is sort of like mm -hmm. this ability to trust. Uh, you said trust yourself and like mm -hmm. that what you're doing is sufficient. But before we go into there, I'm kind of curious. So you described this pattern as a little unsustainable. It's just a matter of time. You can kind of grind, 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 and then something's going to happen. So what will, let's assume there's no breakthrough created nothing changes what mm -hmm. what happens in this process from there let me know if you want me to ask it a bit differently yeah can you ask that a little differently just so I'm clear yeah so i imagine that mm -hmm. based on you saying this isn't sustainable that you don't just do this forever like that the path is not just okay great every morning i wake up and i obsessively check my phone stuff mm -hmm. falls on my lap i feel this struggle but I just keep doing it and that's how life is. I imagine mm -hmm. there's a point where it kind of like the pendulum, so to speak, flips to the other side. Is that? Yeah, yeah, that's accurate? definitely, yeah. Yeah, I got I got, what, I got you now, I'm tracking. Um, yeah, so, well, here's the thing. It's like, even it does feel like I'm kind of perpetually doing that in some capacity. Right but it doesn't feel good like do you know what i mean like it doesn't feel i don't feel balanced and then there is a part of me and i don't think i've hit it yet lately but i have a tendency to want to be like screw it and then just like let go you know what i mean mm. or or what's happened to me you know um recently is like oh i got i can't this isn't working i can't do this i don't trust my capacity to generate um, you know, I'm not inspired. And then, so I'll go seek security and comfort through working for somebody else or looking, mm -hmm. looking at my other options. And then I'll go into like a haze for a week of like, I got to figure something out. And then all of a sudden I'll create something and it'll do well and I'll generate enough until the next time that comes around. And then I'm like, Oh, I got to figure this out. Like, you know? Right. Um, got it. So it's kind of like yeah. a dropping of everything. Mm -hmm. It's just at like, some point. Yeah, like I get a lot of momentum and I feel really good, but there's a part of me that doesn't believe that that's sustainable. And so I start to sabotage myself a little bit, you know, even though reality doesn't really reflect that, if I'm completely honest, you know, my reality of, of, the, of what's happening and how people are experiencing my work and what I'm offering. They're like, no, you're, we very much want to continue to support you and stuff. And it's me that's like, um, yeah. And there's a piece of that, I think, too, that's just coming to it's like, even if it's a big win, I'm not fully like I, I have no reference to like where I was six months ago. I'm just like, oh, but like it wasn't where I want it to be. You know what I mean? Right. The, the it's like the carrot's always moving a little bit like, you know, the line's always kind of moving that I have to. You know. Right. So it's never enough. 
Never, no. And I just heard you describe it like, well, it is sustainable or like people do blah, blah, blah. Like mm -hmm. we want what you have and you're creating value and, and they're in, enrolled and engaged with that. But I'm hearing how you're showing up notwithstanding the circumstances external to yourself, how you're showing up in your own life in the midst Me, of all this is kind yeah. of go, 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 never enough. Yeah. yeah. And, and what's, <clears throat> what I'm really aware of is that no matter, unless like there's some work I have to do around that because I'm aware that like, whether it's a hundred K or a million dollars, like that is going to be ever present because if it's come from zero to whatever it is now, then like there's no sense that it's going to change as the the whatever it is whether it's money or success in any capacity um it's not going to shift right so like that i don't yeah that's why i'm not so concerned about how the world's being reflected to me so much because it actually isn't changing the dials in me if that makes sense you know right yeah like you could have every single person on the planet be like you're doing exactly what you need to do we don't mm -hmm. want anything more from you and you still like yeah, that's great. But like, I know, like, there's some, on some level, this can't trust it. Yeah, exactly. Got it. What's your, this might sound a little out of left field, but like, what's your, how would you describe your relationship with spirit? Yeah, it's, um, it wavers for sure. I feel like, yeah, there, lately I've been very much in the, I haven't thought a lot about spirit, to be honest. I think I've been so in the in the world, so much like doing the things and, and the platforms and email lists and shit, like that right. kind of shit. Like I'm not thinking about like, um, and it's not to, it's, I even have a spiritual practice every morning, you know what I mean? But it's- What is that? I pra I'm practicing uh, Nei Gong right now. I don't know if you're familiar with Nei Gong. So no. it's like, okay, so you're probably familiar with Qi Gong. Yep. So it's a uh, Nagong is uh, related, but it's like the internal uh, art of alchemy and Taoism. So it's um, it's a combination of meditation, breathing and movement. Um, I'm studying with a teacher who's <clears throat> based out of the UK right now. It's been amazing. Um, cool. Very, very cool. Um, very much like in the in the initial stages. So that and yeah, there's always, you know, uh, some. So is that is that practice and, primarily one of embodiment? Like how does spirit come into that? Yeah, well, it's it's cultivating like your chi essentially, right? So it's building. Yeah, so it's it isn't like prayer or something like that. It's it's very much inter. It's called an internal art, so it's very much internalized. So I guess in that capacity, right. it's still a lot about me and the, my body and and things like that. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. My intention is not to like that's not spiritual or anything along yeah, those lines, yeah, right? Totally. That's not where yeah. I'm I'm looking. Just trying to get a sense of how these things play out mm -hmm. okay so you say it wavers anything else in terms of like you know well let's let's lay some groundwork first and then i'll ask you the, the same question mm -hmm. so the broadish brush broadest brush strokes in terms of like um where trust shows up because i heard you mention trust a lack of trust there's like i trust myself I trust others. And then there's like, I trust spirit, kind of like a triangle almost. And so at least for me, uh, what I learned for the most part was like, can't fuck spirit. There's no room for spirit in the science and the critical thinking and all of that, which I was raised and still hold in high regard. That's ephemeral and nebulous and who knows what that means. And then others can't really rely on other people, maybe a select few, but by and large, I can't trust those people. And so everything fell to me. I can trust myself for the most part. Like I will do what I say I'm going to do. I am reliable to create my results, so on and so forth. That was like my relationship to those three things. Mm. Um, so in this context, spirit would be like any, that which is greater than self and others, like that beyond just me and you, something, whatever, you get to create your own relationship to it. So from that lens, how would you say your relationship is to spirit or God or space blueberry muffin or whatever you want to call it? Yeah, what kind of, yeah, what came up for me there was like, I feel responsible for everything I generate. Therefore, mm. like there's a, there's a, there's a complete 
correlation between like the amount of thing that I do to the amount of whatever that I earn um, or right. abundance or success that I have, you know, um, and that leaves little space for trusting in, in spirit, you know? Right. Yeah. Got it. And I know you'd mentioned, so it sounds like it's kind of, it's not that you don't have a spiritual practice, but it sounds like your relationship to spirit itself is more of an afterthought. Mm -hmm. Like first yeah. I'm the one, it all is on my shoulders. This is the way it goes. That's the kind of the starting point. Totally. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Was there more? No, I would, I guess even like my spiritual practice is like on my, like it's, it's like something that I have to do. Do you know what I mean? Here's the thing. Yeah. It's like, especially as being someone that's leading groups through what I would consider embodiment spiritual practice. It's like, I have a commitment in my, for my integrity to be in practice every day. Do you know yes. what I mean? So that doesn't necessarily always mean that it's something that I want to do or even feel connection through, but it's like, oh, this is what I do because uh, I can't teach something that I'm not living, you know? Like kind of yes, thing. totally. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. And then what about, how would you describe your relationship with others inside that paradigm I, I laid out? Would you say in terms of like trust? Is that, is that sure. what you're pointing at? Yeah or whatever you want to come up with. It doesn't have to be trust. It can just be like, others are a bunch of jerks and I don't like any of them, you know, whatever's there for you. Hmm. Yeah. Um, it's a good question. I don't, I don't know. I have an answer for what I, I don't know if there's one common thing that I think of others, you know what I mean? Or one trend or anything about in relation to others. Do you feel like you rely on them? Like, Hey, I, you know, I don't have to do it all. I can hand this over to this person and I can allow others. And no, I'm doing everything myself right now. Um, Got it. And I'm getting, a, I'm super supported you know, in that, yeah. but it all comes, but in terms of like any type of delegating or asking for anything beyond support of like literally someone to talk to or someone to get coached by or something like that, there's not a lot of space for that in my life really. And that comes right. from an inherent lack of trust in other people doing as good a job as me for sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I totally yeah. get that. I can relate to that very well. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you're reliable to get support, but most of that support is in you being able to do more, you being able to handle, hold, create, cause more in, in Fixing, the world. Yeah, whatever, figuring it out, being, you know, getting the new tool or the next thing that I need from somebody or, yeah. Got it. Okay. What are you seeing in this conversation so far, if anything? Um, it feels really based around uh, trust, not only in myself, but in spirit and other, like there's just this overarching theme of like, I can't, yeah, I can't trust necessarily. And, and from that, I try to do more as a method of like, perhaps, mm. if I control more, then there will be more trust available for me and myself or something. Do you know what I mean? But I right. think inherently, what's coming to me is like, the more action I take is actually just the product of, of less trust in in life, perhaps in all the permutations, whether that's from spirit, myself or other yeah yeah and something that me, it's yeah that's been that's been a part of me for for as long as i can remember it's like really needing that i remember even being like four years old my mom used to tell me like i she would have to lay out everything we were going to do that day in order for me to like trust her enough to not be upset mm. like i would i would incessantly ask her like what's next and then where are we going and you do know what i mean like i just had this disposition that's like i need the all mm. the, the where do you think you learned that from I have no idea. Like at that age, like it's hard to say. Like, are your parents um, together? Was there a divorce? No, was there there's stuff a divorce like that? for sure. There is a divorce for sure. And, you know, um, yeah, I think there's a lack of con control. I was five. Got it. Okay. I mean, some of these things make a lot of, you know, as you know, I don't tend to look back in the past, just it can be yeah. nice sometimes to like, oh, of course, that makes sense. It's nice to just see that it makes sense. But like, 
I could imagine even for a young child, sort of like the, that your parents will be there is like, that's a given. And then to have them like, by the way, not would be a pretty severe, like, oh, I can't rely on other people yeah, because I did. And that's what happened. They leave. Oh shit. Okay. That's the lesson for me here. Very much so. Yeah, absolutely. Got it. So yeah, it, it's kind of like in order for you to play a bigger and bigger game, the only options down this path are you got to do more and more, it sounds like. And so then what you do is you go get supported to expand your capacity to do more and more and more. But it's kind of like it, it, it occurs a little bit like a linear progression. Like mm-hmm. you can't, there's no ability to expand in other dimensions or anything like that. It's just like, no. how big can I make myself? Which I imagine would be, you know, a driving force behind all the work you're willing to do. You're really reliable for that. Yeah. But also inherently some, to some extent limiting. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, it doesn't leave a lot of space for much else because if I grow linearly with whatever I'm creating, like there's only, only so much capacity of like time and, and energy that I have where, and I'm, and I'm feeling that. And I mean, I'm also in an environment where the COVID restrictions are quite intense right now. So I've kind of just yeah. like thrown myself into what I'm doing. Cause I'm like, well, what else is there to do? Right. But I was just having a conversation with my partner the other night. I'm like, wow, I'm feeling like really like um, unbalanced right now. You know, like I'm not really getting out and just doing the things that I, I used to enjoy really doing because I especially just so much screen time. And um, and I'm actually seeing how that's going to impact my offering in a negative sense at some point too, you know. Mm. What do you see down that path? I'm just not getting sourced. You know what I mean? Like I'm not getting sourced by like I, I'm, a, I'm a huge nature advocate. I, you know, I like to to get outside that's really where if if i find spirit anywhere it's there you know um mm. not in my living room practicing qigong or whatever like that you know uh, I mean? right. as much right. as i totally. love that that's like the baseline but there has to be there has to be something beyond that and so yeah. yeah ah that makes sense so yeah what what's the um what's the half-life on this like how long will this continue before something shifts well that's the thing it's like if if it's anything like the past then it's going to be get to the point where i'm like it stops working out or i don't i have such a little amount of trust that i throw myself back into doing something that isn't aligned with really what i'm here i feel like i'm here to do Mm. or um I mean, it's like almost like your trust in yourself breaks down over time. Like yeah. Even that starts to fall away. Totally. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Or at least you're reliable to keep doing this stuff, but you can't rely on anything else. So yeah, I'm just going to be like, in a cave doing this and nothing will happen. Yeah. I'm going to hit a limit where it's like, I'm going to hit a limit in my business as well, where it's like, I literally can't do anymore. And like, now I need to, like you said, expand in other dimensions. And it also, that's a great analogy because I feel like, a little one dimensional right now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm, yeah, I'm stuck in one gear kind of thing. Uh huh. So we've been talking about this through the lens of trust. Mm -hmm. What's the lens through this might be a bit of a weird question. So I'm happy to rephrase or work with you to get something that kind of guides us a bit better. Sure. Um, But what's the lens that you've been so if trust is the one we're currently talking about, what's the one you've been using? You know, I'm not doing enough or, you know, for everything that's showing up, how have you been relating or looking at that? It's a, it's a not enough. Not it's enough. Like not enough. I think, and, and, and I did some work around this a few years ago. Um, so you used to feel not enough, but now you never do. <laughs> yeah exactly fun. yeah no that's exactly <laughs> it though. no 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 the, the work was and I'm, I'm saying that i'm like i'm still it's still very present in my life is like uh yeah, yeah i'm not enough it's not even that i'm not doing enough but it's like i'm not enough uh-huh you know like that's a that's a belief that i don't literally think those words but i can you know i see how it shows up in in the ways that i myself talk or how i do things like i'll over compensate for not being enough you know like i'll 
you know, when I was. Yeah. Tell me what, what's the solution. So when I'm not enough is there, what is the solution to that? Yeah. And then that's where I think a lot of like my righteousness sometimes stems from as well, because it's like, I'm Mm. compensating by knowing everything, you know? Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what else do you do to resolve not, not being enough? I reject, which I think is okay. something, yeah, like I reject others if I feel like not competent or not worthy, or I reject ideas, you know, Okay. Like if I can't beat them, disown them kind of thing or something like that. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I, I'll take, yeah, I'll take myself, like I guess I said I'd eject as well from things, like, you know what I mean? If I don't feel good enough or don't feel like I can do it, like I'll take myself out of it. Mm. or i get hyper competitive that's the other side of it too like i can be very competitive if i feel like like i'm even competitive in my business you know what i mean like i look at other yes, people in my yeah other people in my space and like i love them but i'm also like oh i want to i want to do better and not necessarily to make them worse but i just you know there's a level of healthiness to it but there's a level of, of it feels a little sticky to me as well you know like sure yeah yeah well being committed to our growth and development and our highest expression on this planet is an amazing commitment. Mm -hmm. But if we're doing it from the fundamental belief that we're not enough, Mm -hmm. then that's just a recipe for misery, right? It doesn't matter how far we get. It's just going to reify and prove that I'm not enough because whenever will I be enough? Exactly. Do you get into a, like a fuck ton of action or anything like that from if you're not enough, like, is there anything, any flavor to that? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's usually like very, uh, it's like aggressive action. Do you know what I mean? Like I'll think of things. Mm. Um, give me an example. Yeah. I think, I think the reason that comes to me is, you know, like I come from a farming background or whatever like that. And if I see other people <clears throat> kicking the dog or something like that, like I'll, I'll like amp it up and I'll do like, I'll move twice as fast and do twice as much Mm. stuff. And like, you know, like I, I make an example of it almost. Um, Yeah. And I'm very quick to point out when others aren't doing enough in the past, Mm. you know, like when I was having people that were working under me or with me. Um, Yeah. Which doesn't really like, you know, especially as someone that's, focusing on their leadership like it doesn't really allow other people's leadership to emerge because it, i'm very much i can be very dominating in that capacity you know right um, yeah so there's an attention that goes kind of like you're not enough but it's like the attention goes to then it's almost like nothing's enough yeah like exactly. other people it's aren't enough either enough. And, right totally yeah even in my i i would think even my intimate relationships it's like that that's a common theme for <clears throat> a conflict or something like that. It's like, oh, you did the thing, but you didn't do it enough, or you didn't do it the way that it, it was meant to be done, or da da da. And I'm I'm very conscious that like all of that is, you know, it's how I see myself as well, right? Like I, I of course, I'm just projecting that. Um, but like all the awareness in the world around it and seeing it is like not shifted the yet for me. Of course. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've definitely, yeah, I've, I've, t- I've tempered it for sure. Like I've, ma- I've done work on it. I don't believe it's binary. Like all of a sudden I'm completely fine, but it certainly is still the driving theme in a lot of what I do in the world, you know? Mm. Mm-hmm. Got it. Got it. So there's that. And then what's the other, so if we imagine like, nothing it's never enough i'm never enough there's never enough full stop like if that's a wagon rut and that's one of the directions in the wagon rut mm-hmm. let me give you an analogy first so if someone was like i'm selfish i'm selfish i'm selfish one version of that would be like them trying to resolve their own selfishness and that of other people i'm generous i'm generous i'm generous i'm going to show up generous fuck generous generous and then the other direction would be like fuck it. I'm just going to accept that I'm selfish and fuck you. You're selfish too. So I'm just going to, so, you know, like they're both inside Mm -hmm. the same wagon rut. It's either just forward or back. Mm -hmm. What's the other side of this not enoughness kind of thing we're talking about? Arrogance. 
Can you say more? Yeah, I think, like I said, like, um, I'll get critical of, of other things that I see outside of myself because, like, I put myself on a pedestal, like, oh, like, I wouldn't, I know how to do this or I would do that differently or I would do that better or, like, that kind of thing where it's, like, they're not, I, I separate myself from everything else that I see. Um mm. It's kind of like that sanctimonious saint energy right. <clears throat> my my survival mechanism right it's like i become better then because i feel not enough uh-huh yeah. right so it's either i'm not enough or you're not enough mm -hmm. or, or it's not enough or they're not enough or like anything it could be it, right it just have to be human you know Right. And so I imagine in this, it's, it's almost like the refuge is that you're not an, like you're whoever someone else is not enough. Cause at least then you get a break mm -hmm. from this. There's just sort of like, yeah. okay, well, at least it's not me. I'm better than that idiot over there. Totally. Phew. Got it. What a fun, fun game to be locked so in. Hey? Great. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, I had, I had Hans coach me the other day. I used to like to call it Hans. Love Hans. He's like, he's like looking, he's like, I was looking at your social media and I was like, I just don't really see a lot of joy. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like very much producing and very much creating a lot in the world. And I was like, oh, is that true? Cause like, you know, it's my experience is like, I'm actually a pretty, you know, I have a lot of humor and, a, and a, I'm a pretty yeah. fun person, but I think recently for sure, I think there is a lot less joy uh, available for me in my life and I've been more in that rut I think too as well I'm finding mm. that you know this journey of really creating and my art in the world and and creating a business has just uh, driven up a lot of that stuff you know because yeah. it's like I have something to prove yeah you know kind of this yeah got it so there's that's another kind of uh context you know like joy or trust now are two places that are kind of outside of mm. of this um i could see trust being a little bit um almost slippery because it's like well i trust that it's enough and it's like oh mm. shit that's now we're back inside the wagon rut right yeah. um you're in the forge and we did work talking about our breakthroughs like what are we here to create for the remaining three months what's the breakthrough that we want to like have created what are we going to use this remaining time for? I'm curious where you got to with that, or if you've gotten anywhere with that up to this point. I haven't sat with it to really um, have a clear answer. Uh, but it's definitely this. I mean, yeah, I, I, it's not that I don't want to use the word trust now, but there's it, it's I don't know what it is. It's something in that zone, something in that area where it's like, man, I just really want to relax. Like I want to relax and like feel like what I've done is enough. The gifts that I offer are enough, you know, because that incessant drive for me to, to grow is beautiful. Right. And same with, I actually, I find the like kind of that warrior energy and that competitiveness actually serves very well in the work that I do because men are really seeking that. The men that come to me are really seeking to be challenged in a lot of ways. And I have a capacity to, to do that. I'm yeah. learning to open my heart through that and really serve them from there. Of course, always, yeah. there's always more space for that. Um, but it's to live in that energy as I do for like 90% of the time. Uh, it's just, you know, there's, you know, I was at a, a retreat with John last year and we did some, we moved a lot of energy and my nervous system like Tends to relaxed. happen. Yeah. I, but I, it was like in the second day and we had a full week there because we, the assistants came early and my, my nervous system hit a spot where I had felt so relaxed. I don't, I don't remember the last time I ever felt so relaxed. Like I just felt so at ease, you know? And I was like, wow, is this available to me? You know, like all the time. And of course it, it lasted for, you know, and then I kind of elastic back and yeah, and I come back to my normal world pushes you, know, you back into the shape that it knows. you. Right, yeah. exactly. And, I, and, and it just like was an insight there. That's like, shit, like, I can't just be screaming all day to move that energy all the time. But there's some like level I can, I can hit where if I operated from there, um, 
I just, I feel like I, would, I could be doing all the same things, but there'd be much more ease and much more grace in my life, you know? Yeah. And, the, yeah. the, the challenge, not the challenge, but like, first of all, moving energy is always going to move energy, which is great. The place where that can start to become not bad or wrong or anything like that, but just, uh, where we can get stuck then is if we're not doing whatever work there is to address the fact that we're creating the energy in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like, if I'm doing something that's causing inflammation in my shoulder, what starts to happen is my shoulder gets inflamed. And then the inflammation, every time I move my shoulder causes it to become more inflamed. Yeah, We got to get that inflammation down, but I also have to address what's creating it in the very first place. So it's kind of like the, the both parts of it. Um, Okay. So, well, what I'm conscious to is we definitely don't want to fix any of this because it's all made up. So like your story that it's not enough, you're not enough, this isn't enough. It's true to the extent you believe it, but there's no objective truth we can find anywhere that's going to confirm that, right? It's purely your belief and then the actions you take from your belief and the world that creates, which then reinforces the belief. Mm -hmm. So I really want to be cautious about us fixing that because if something's made up, then all that fixing it does is recreate, reinforce it. Yeah. If I have a story that I'm stupid and then I go out of my way to prove I'm not stupid, that just reinforces the belief. And it's like, but why am I doing that in the first place? You don't need to do that, Adam. You're missing the point entirely. Having said, so I want to presence that. There's a caution there, like sort of in my space, like, okay, let's be careful about fixing this. And since it sounds like trust is the word kind of resonating with you and or spirit. And I can't remember if I've reflected this to you before, but there's something about you, Evan, that I really feel. Well, do you, can you, do you remember your essence offhand? Yep. What Passion, is it? Purpose, presence, love, and truth. Got it. So the thing that's really been present for me in this conversation is the spirit and the divinity that you bring into the space mm. from whatever place you want to hold that word. But that's kind of, very conscious to me and um you know maybe that's your life purpose or maybe that what i'm feeling is kind of the nexus of the love and the purpose that you are along with all the other cool things so let's imagine that there was no not enough or they're not enough or i'm not enough or any of that like let's just move that entirely out of the space so that we're just not even really talking about that right now and instead we were just looking through the lens of like divinity or spirit or trust or joy, whatever you want to choose from that lens, like, Hey, what there is for me to do is to practice that, to bring the being of spirit or divinity or trust or joy. Mm -hmm. What, what would there be for you to do right now or over the course of the next week or today? Yeah, I think I, I, <clears throat> I think what resonates with me most out of all those words is spirit. And it's, um, there is an essence of like surrender that needs to happen. Um, and, you know, I'm reflecting on how s small my life has kind of become lately in terms of like, I mean, everyone's kind of experiencing that in a lot of ways. Yeah. I'm really, really, you know, and I'm in Montreal right now, which is just particularly intense um, with lockdown and, and restrictions and curfews and things. Um, but it doesn't have, like, that's that's what I'm using as a reason to not do the things that have me connect to spirit. You know what I mean? And I think, like I, I mentioned before, is like taking care of myself in a way that has me feeling connected and that you know going and um like getting out into into the natural world and and putting away like my computer and stuff for a few days and just trusting that like I'll, it'll be okay <laughs> like you know what i mean um and and i think for me too uh getting with my, fa like seeing my family, my family doesn't live too, too far from here. And I always find, I saw my, my brother a few weeks back and he just had a baby last year that I only met once. And 
that was a weekend mm-hmm. where I was really just able to let go of of like all this stuff and just spend time in the present with you know with family and with this beautiful little cherub that he had and, you know, good word yeah she's she's beautiful um yeah because it seems like even even when i try to make space i'll go for long walks and stuff and leave the phone at home there's like kind of this incessant voice you know and um there's like very few activities that get me away from that voice you know sometimes playing more music is one for sure being a musician um yeah yeah you know my yeah my connection with spirit is very much one that happens in motion it often doesn't happen when i'm sitting on a cushion or something like that though it's possible you know it's much more of me um doing things that make me like come alive a little bit you know including teaching and stuff to be honest like when i'm when i'm leading groups and teaching like that's actually a moment that i feel all of this little stuff that i do throughout the weeks and stuff it's like kind of i get to those moments where i'm with people for a few hours and i, I really do feel spirit you know um, mm. I prepare i pre- I, every before every call and every session I have, I always spend half an hour, an hour, like connecting, right? And that feels really good. But that's still under the tent, so that I have an intention behind it to lead powerfully, right? So, well, and I could see the setup there might be great. So, in order to create the being of spirit, I must create teaching, and in order to create exactly. teaching, I must enroll. And now, yeah. so I'm back in that, <laughs> totally. yeah. yeah, and and that's spirit as an end from some other means exactly and where what i'm curious about is like the practice of you embodying the being of spirit which is like spirit is here in this moment and then in the next moment Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and really feeling into what would what is spirit calling me to do in this moment Dance, which is going to sing and things like that like those kind of things where i'm very much yeah it's very much through me rather than it doesn't have a means to an end you know like yeah. the last it seems so wrong just to put the idea out there that i use use something like spirit as a means to an end to achieve an objective right um oh so, so many of us do that though a hundred percent and I, that's yeah. part of the reason why i'm in this space is because i freaking hate that kind of stuff you know like right i hate it i hate the disingenuous like anyway that's a whole other conversation uh, yeah but yeah you know you know what i mean so um yes yeah yeah i think it's it's actually quite simple things you know that i just don't give my 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 life i don't give enough space because i can always come up with the reason of things that i have to do right totally and here's the yeah. thing is that um <clears throat> that voice that you described is a voice that has served you for 30 plus years and it's well-worn territory and it's also i assert part of the voice of your fear Mm -hmm. and we're not trying to make that go away so that voice may well be there all we're creating is a different place to come from rather than reacting to that voice right the reaction to the voice is well fuck, I need to do a whole bunch of stuff or fuck them. They're not doing that. So at least I can feel good enough. And then I don't have to buy into this voice's story because I've proven that it's not. And all of that is engagement with that part of your stuff. Yeah. yeah. And the path of spirit may well guide you towards like, actually what there is for me to do right now is to write some copy or to write a post that really inspires me or to reach out to someone, invite them. But it may also be like, go and fucking walk in the snow or, you know, I'm going to play guitar for two hours. And that voice is just going to be like, meh, 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 meh. You're like, fuck you. I'll make you into a song, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Who knows? Right. Or I'm just gonna let you be there. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that point piece you just put about like, I, you know, I haven't written in like a month, which is unusual for me. Yeah. You're um, a good writer. Because it's something that I thank you. It's something that I really enjoy doing. And, it, and it, I feel like it really is a practice that when I'm, when I, and I'm sure you can attest to this too, when I really am feeling 
uh, tethered to spirit, that's when my writing is really fantastic. And I'm like, wow, where the hell is this coming from? Right. Yeah. And I, I haven't, I haven't even, yeah, exactly. Like sometimes you look back at your stuff and you're like, holy shit. But uh, I haven't even felt that impulse lately, you know, and I, yeah. I haven't really made the connection that maybe that's because I haven't been making enough space to actually feel connected lately, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a few things to put into the space and then I want to check mm -hmm. and see what you see you want to practice going forward from okay. here. Sure. So are you familiar with Michael Beckwith? Mm, I know that name. I don't know how, but yeah. he's so cool. He's, he's a black preacher who created, I think it was called homeboy ministries. He used to have okay. like long dreads. Now he's just got a shaved head, but um, he's an amazing preacher. His uh, ministry these days is called uh, agape spelled agape yep. agape ministries. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, brilliant man. Incredible energy. He's like, in his 60s, he's doing backflips and stuff. It's ridiculous. Anyhow, he has this distinction, which are the kingdoms of consciousness that we move through in relationship with spirit. And mm -hmm. those four kingdoms are things happen to me. So the lowest level of consciousness is a kind of a victim. It's just, life's happening onto me. The next mm -hmm. level is things happen by me. So this is the place most of us that are really like i can trust myself that's where we tend to be it's like it's all me moving stuff into the world things happen by me the next layer is things happen through me so there i can trust spirit but i'm not really co-creating with it it's more like i'm a vessel through which stuff passes and then the highest level of consciousness is things happen as me spirit exists in this world as me and so there's really a sort of a dynamic back and forth, trusting what spirit's bringing and trusting that I am the embodiment of spirit in this moment in time. Mm. I don't know that there's anything for you to do with that. I just want to put that into the space for you, kind of like, Wah. there you go, that's there. The other thing I want to share is more just to connect with you and say, you know, um, most of my work has over the last couple of years shifted into this realm because I'm so reliable down the path of like me doing everything that is not so hard for me, but yeah. trusting something beyond myself and even beyond the conception of my own intellect that comes tough. And what I've noticed is that as I trust that more, a lot of struggle falls away. You may have even heard me say this and that is confronting for me. Yeah. To let go of struggle in my life is quite confronting because if I'm struggling, I'm doing the work. And if I'm doing, doing the work, yeah. I'm not going to be left behind. And if I'm not going to be left behind, I can breathe and eventually I'll get to where I'm meant to get and whatever. Yeah, that very much resonates with me. Yeah. yeah. So as you practice this, that voice may actually get louder right. rather than quieter. Yeah. And that doesn't mean your practice isn't working or that you're not on the path. Yeah. What do you see to take on, Evan? What do you see from here? There might be to practice or to, to well, to practice. I said it perfect the first time. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a level of trusting an impulse that I don't think I've done. Like rather, because I can see the trap also of like, okay, well, I'm just going to structure like spiritual time. And like, do you know what I mean? Like every day yes, I'll, I do. I'll spend this much time. And then it's like, yeah. That is not, it's the same game though, you know? Yeah. Um, and so there's something for me and, and it actually might be really unstructured, which is, a, which is really edgy for me where it's like, maybe I wake up one morning and if I have, I don't have anything on my calendar being like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I don't know what I'm going to do, but like, I'm going to get in my car and go somewhere, not here. Like, do you know what I mean? Like just actually getting, because that's where so much of my inspiration that comes into my work into my writing comes from that it doesn't come from the daily grind you know what i mean um yeah i haven't made any space for that um yeah and there's hmm. so what yeah, structure I... do you think would support that practice well that's what's interesting i'm i, I it's I don't know. I, I think I'm stuck there because I'm, I'm also like, oh, I don't want it to become another thing on the calendar in some regard. But I also, will, if I don't do that, then I also know that it could just get lost in the shuffle of being not, totally not done, you know, so. And, you know, the structure might be something as simple as like a, a sticky you put to remind you yeah. what is spirit telling me right now? Or so it doesn't have to be like 
for five minutes at 9 a.m. It might be this, but it doesn't have to be mm-hmm. at 9 a.m. I sit down and I think of spirit and then I stop. Yeah. But wherever you start is great. Um, and I got, I totally get what I'm hearing you say is absent any kind of structure, reliably, this is not going to be what's happening because yeah. the way your life's set up is to work inside this wagon rut that we've talked about. Yeah. Yeah. I think what else is there for me too is um, I've got some travel coming up uh, through through California and I have some pretty big gaps of time in between. And I was, I'm thinking I want to really utilize those to just go somewhere beautiful and get to some hot springs and, you know, just, um, rather than trying to like, okay, I got to find a place with a great internet connection so I can keep hammering. Cause that's where my mind's like been yeah. <laughs> this whole time. It's like, I'll finish the intensive. And then I got six days until the other one. So like, I'll get a Airbnb and I'll like do all this stuff and create more. And it's like, wow, I'm like in this beautiful mountain town. And like all I'm yeah. planning is like how I can find a good place to work, you know? So um, like creating some, some space around those times to really not only integrate everything that I'm, I'm going through at that moment, but just really use that space to, yeah, to seek spirit and inspiration and, and joy, really, because I think through my connection to spirit, that's where my joy really emerges, you know. Um, there's like a, there's a childlikeness to it, you know, when I feel connected. It's like I'm very playful. Yeah. And, yeah. So anything specific you want to declare you're going to take on, whether it's just, hey, I'm going to use those seven days or I'm going to sit down and meditate and think about what is spirit offering me in this moment or, yeah. you know, I'm not going to push I'm, you much further than this, but I just want to check if there's anything specific you want to declare as far as something you're going to practice. Yeah, absolutely. I think but between those those six days that I have, I'm going to, I have commitments that, you know, I have to do a few things, but I'm not going to take anything on top of that. Like I'm going to do the coaching calls, I'm going to run my group. And then I'm just going to get out and like explore and really use that, that window of time to um, not even really plan too much, but just allow spirit to guide me and to see like, oh, you know, let the right people come into my life and invite me to the right things as life often happens when you allow it to, you know, and, and use that window to like, yeah, just like reinvigorate that connection. I think, you know, beautiful. Really good. Yeah. I keep getting burned on my, uh, the calls with my mentor for my MCC certification. It's like, stop. We don't give people practices at the mentor code or the master certificate. Anyhow, the MCC level, I'm going to give you a practice. Anyhow, Okay. Cool. <laughs> I don't care. So <laughs> what I would, the thing I might, that you might take on that might support you is noticing when not enough in all of its iterations is showing up and just asking yourself, what is spirit calling for in this moment? So just a way to, to choose a different context in the moment. And maybe it's like, it makes no sense to me, but it's telling me to go barefoot and walk around the block. Okay. And then you don't even have to do it. Maybe all you do is start to listen to the voice and hear what spirit is calling for in the moment. And maybe you empower it and take it on. I love that. I'm just writing it down. You I put it on a sticky. Nice. Like yeah. Cool. Yeah, I like that. Anything else that would have this feel complete before we start to go into our wind down? Mm. No, I didn't really expect the conversation to go in this direction at all, but yeah. Me neither. Kind of hoped it wouldn't. (laughs) And I'm not even, I'm not even, so we'll we'll shift into winding down that I'm going to acknowledge you to finish up, but like... I don't feel settled in this area in my own life. You know, this is yeah. very much my work is, is in this area. And over the last month, I've been, I think I'm about ready to declare a breakthrough in this area, but over the last month, I've been working in a breakthrough in spirit. And I met, I've been at that phase. It's just like me walking into a brick wall and I'm like, well, that didn't work. Let's try it. Fuck, still brick wall. And so, mm. you know, but there was a point where the voice came in, you know, you were talking about nothing's enough. And I was mm. like, ah, I think the conversation's going to be about spirit. I at least have to trust that voice and ask, what is your relationship to it? And then, oh, wow, there, that's where we're at. So yeah, cool to go there. Uh, yeah. I love that, that whatever I'm working in is just where you're at in a capacity as well. Totally. A hundred percent. There's a, uh, It's cool because I find in this work, 
what we're leading, our people are like, they're um, maybe one, maybe a couple steps behind us, not by much. Mm -hmm. The breakthrough we're up for is going to be the one, like whatever we generate sources the breakthrough for the people we're supporting. So what I'm present to is a lot of my clients and a lot of you guys, I mean, you're in the forge, a lot of people in the forge are either right on the verge of creating a breakthrough or are in the process of creating the breakthrough. And like, we're starting to see a lot of popping, like kernels of popcorn popping and mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, right. That's, <laughs> that's how that goes is I generate something. And then that allows energetically something to come forward that I wasn't expecting. So it's very cool that you're here too. Love it. Yeah. And I really acknowledge you, Evan, for generating all the results that you're generating. Like you're having a huge impact. You're creating a bunch. You're, you're having people reach out to you. Like that's just remarkable. And here you are doing this work in partnership with that. So it's not, I don't hear you doing like looking through this lens, taking on your life from the lens of like, if I can just do this, then things will be better. Although your fear might sometimes pull you in that direction, but you're creating some results and having an impact in the world and still committed to doing your work, which is just remarkable and a measure of who you are as a man. Thank you. Anything you want to share about the conversation? Either like, I didn't think we'd go there or I have questions or I'm surprised or I hate it or anything else. I, I mean, yeah. Um, I, I liked that you asked that question relationship to spirit because it did catch me off a little bit off guard. And also I could feel in this conversation, um, there was like some fear that came up, like, where are we going? Is this going to, you know, and it was like fear for you as well. And I, I totally, you know, how we can co-opt our coach into wanting to support them. And I was like very um, just present to like that part of me. That's like, oh man, like I, I got to make Adam look really good for this hour. Um, <laughs> Which I, I didn't, I didn't fall into that trap or anything like that. I, nice. mean, I felt very sincere, um, but it's just funny how, yeah, I just thought that was a funny kind of remark to make. Regarding yeah. yeah. Uh, we would have caught that pretty early on mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and hundred percent, you know, that's, uh, that's part of the, when coaches aren't working with coaches, you know, or they're not getting support in their own work. They, they're like, well, my clients say I'm doing good. But the thing that we step over is like, we are vested in making the person supporting us feel good. We want like, and you know, I, we've just done a lot of work on that in the forge, right? You, I don't, I assume you watch the call reviews and often it's like, okay, you guys are colluding. You're playing nice yeah. together. And it's just so human. You know, I don't want to come out and be like, you're not doing good at this. That's not going to feel good at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see if there's anything else that I'm present to the thing I remember, uh, I would have been like, I was training coaches in San Diego and the way we did that work was our leadership team. We had the group of coaches we were training. We had the leadership team and, you know, that was a little higher, higher archical and the person that actually was the CEO of this company and was the person leading this work and developing my leadership. We all would gather before we'd get together with the participants and we'd share what's going on. Here's where I'm at, blah, blah, blah. And the reason we do that is if I'm sort of trying to keep my emotions down or if I'm fucked up because of this breakdown in my life and I'm trying to operate over top of it, it's not going to work. I'm going to show up in the room and that's going to be in the space. So we work on that. We clear it all out before we begin our work with the other people. And I was sharing with them like, ah, you know, I've, I've got a bunch more clients come on and like, it's good, but I know it's, it's just never enough money. And he said the most in fear. It, it was like, it gave me some hope, but it was also infuriating. Cause he was like, you know, I hear you say that it, there's just never enough money. And what that tells me is this is not an issue about money. This is probably more a spiritual issue. If it's never enough, no matter what, that's probably some inability on your part, Adam, to trust that like on some level, this is you're provided for. And the hopeful part was like, oh, maybe there's a way out of this beyond making more money. Yeah. And the rest of me was like, but fuck you. I need more money. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I don't need a Bible or whatever. Like, yeah. what does that even mean? And how do I operationalize <laughs> that? So just funny, yeah. this sort of stuff. 
I really get that. That's, that's uh-huh. kind of, yeah, I, I see that part of me. That's like, yeah, but like, I need more abundance, you know, I just like, totally. I, there, there is like, there is no place I could get. I, and that's kind of what I came into this conversation saying. I was like, I don't think there is a place where it would feel like enough, you know, like I really don't yeah. in, until I, I break, you know, I, what, what do you call it? Like, uh, what's the word like bankrupt this context or whatever you know yes yeah absolutely um i want to finish by acknowledging you may i do so you may great so um i really i want to start just by acknowledging you for the embodiment of spirit that you are evan there's a real um there's such a purity to your energy is how i experience you like very committed to truth and committed to moving the stuff out of that way, out of love way, so that that truth can be received and given from a place of real love, of like, it's all perfect exactly as, as it is. From there, can we start to take a look at what's going on? And that is such a gift to um, men and women, to all of us. I really acknowledge you for being someone so reliable to do his work you know, to, to get coached by Hans or here, or to be in the forge or to go do your work with John Wineland or what is it? Nagong? Is that what it was called? Nagong. Yeah. Nagong. I I, I was one of the other to to take that work on, you know, you're just so reliable to be supported. And for me, that makes you so trustable. Mm. And it's not that you're, it's not that because you're doing that, then I can trust you. It's that all of the work you are reliable to do has you be embodied in such a way that you occur very trustable. I feel I can really rely on you. So I really honor the integrity that you are not from rigidity, but from like just a commitment to being workable as a man and to support others and to your commitment to support others first and foremost, by getting supported. That's really beautiful. And it does our profession honor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Where do people find out about you and what you're up to and read your writing and all that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Facebook, of course, here I'm tagged in this, Evan Veritas. Uh, I run a business. It's called Integral Alpha. You can, I'm on Instagram. You can find it there. Um, you can email me, just evan at integralalpha.com. Happy to have a conversation um, with any of you or anybody and i run an eight-week program we uh start thursday so i got two spots left so nice. um, if anyone's interested in that feel free to reach out to me it's for men it's an eight-week leadership program for men and it really takes a lot of that embodiment work uh that i've been studying for the last like three years or so with john um and it takes a little bit of the work that we do too so there's an ontological lens for it for sure um and just a, an amazing opportunity for me to get together uh I ran my first iteration of it and we just finished up a few weeks back and every single guy is continuing to work with, with, uh, with me. So it's seems to be working. Nice. People like it. Right. So, so, um, yeah, things are growing and, and things are happening. So just feel free to, free to reach out. And, yeah. Happy to connect. Uh, is it virtual? It's I virtual. It is. Yeah. It's all over zoom. Yeah. yeah. One call a week, two hours. Yeah. So it's all virtual right now. Nice. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We need more, um, uh, we just need more of all of this work, but uh, mm-hmm. I'm always present to the, the wounding and the masculine and the feminine and what's available when we start to like heal that and, and really embody something beyond a reaction to the wound. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful work. I'm honored to do it. Like it feels, it feels yeah. really, yeah. Nice. I really recommend for all of you watching that you or listening that you follow Evan. Um, he's been, uh, with us in the forge for six months. And I say this all the time, follow the people that are, that you are like, that are going through the forge. Cause these are people really in a deeply immersive transformative container and taking on their work. And so, um, they're people that are creating art in the world and putting themselves into the world in a way that's really fully expressed and really models the humility and the full expression and the courage and the integrity required to be leader. Let me see if there's anything I want to plug. Yes. Uh, The next iteration of the Creating Clients course, we're just finishing the last one. So the way it goes is we wind up in March, April is off, and then we're going to start again in May. So that's 10 weeks. Um, And what we're doing is helping you 
break down the false idea that there's coaching or whatever you love doing over here. And then there's this crappy thing called selling or creating clients you got to do over there. All of that sucks. And everything built on top of that, which is all these funnels and all these sales training, it all means that the best it gets is you get really good at doing a thing that you don't really like doing, hopefully, so you can minimize your time spent over there. And that robs you of joy and really the opportunity that's available from integrating these two things and finding like, oh, wow, creating clients can be as much just a part of my natural way of being, deepening relationship with people and finding joy and connection. And from there, it all becomes possible. So if that's interesting to you, you can go to adamquiney.com slash client creation. We've got that there. Uh, you went through that, right, Evan? You kind of got a freebie course. as part of the forge. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Highly, highly recommend it. It's super, super helpful for anyone yeah. that's creating clients for sure. Yeah. Nice. All right. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Really appreciate everyone that showed up. Um, and we will see you next week. Have an amazing weekend. Bye everyone. I'm going to end this live stream. Great. Cool. I'm going to stop this recording. Boom.